Hi everyone. First, a really super quick health update for Lee. She's had her back surgery on January 23rd and she's currently recovering. She's following all of the doctor's orders and I've seen her walking every 40 minutes just as the doctor has required and walking was not something she was able to do before surgery. While she's not rushing things, I think you are going to see her back on camera very soon. And while I cannot speak for you all, I can say that it is going to be very emotional for her to be back on your computer screens, sharing her thoughts and teachings as before. Now on to today's topic, achieving a film-like look with a digital camera. To get there though, I have to back up to why we would want to do that in the first place. Now recently, as Lee and I have been shooting more film, yes, good old fashioned 35 millimeter still camera film, we've been enjoying the process, the mindfulness of it, the emphasis on each individual image, and the nostalgia. To us, the look and feel of film images is different. And while it can feel limiting in certain ways to use film, it feels more free in others. Personally, I feel free to capture fewer images, and then I put more time and thought into the ones that I do capture. The emphasis becomes the process itself, from carefully selecting the film stock, knowing that you'll be using it for the next 36 images at its ASA rating and locked in to either color or black and white, depending on what you choose. Then you're ferrying it to get developed after you shoot with it or you're spending the time to develop at home. And then what to do with the negatives, uh, scan them digitally, get prints made, and then how to edit or really edit at all and leave the film as, as it is. Now, why do we put ourselves through this? Uh, we enjoy the process. And while I can't speak for Lee, I can say that for me, it makes each individual image feel more important as there were more steps. I was more selective and the entire time from loading the film through a final print or digital file, making that image very special and unique was top of mind the whole time. Then there's one other big thing, the look of film images. That's the one thing that really keeps me coming back. That look, it, to me, it's something that's hard to describe, but I know it when I see it. And it holds true for both black and white and color film images. Maybe it's the gray and the muted colors uh, compared to our digital wonder cameras. And I have to admit, there's some nostalgia involved as well with that look. Uh, for many, film takes us back to a simpler time where you wouldn't rattle off 500 images in an afternoon and then picking up your prints, ripping them out of the envelope. Remember these envelopes? And then going through them in your car. It was all part of the experience. We've certainly talked about film before on this channel, and every time there are quite a few comments from viewers saying that they would love to use film, but the cost is just too much for them, mainly the film and developing cost. So recently I've been on a quest for myself and for all of you to study the different methods of shooting digitally to get that film look. Even those of us who enjoy film, it takes a lot of steps and fundamentally, whether shooting film or video, uh, digital, <laughs> many aspects are the same. The digital camera is not requiring me to be less mindful and take too many pictures. I can certainly slow down and enjoy the digital process too. But what about that look? That film look that I always crave and enjoy from my film images, how can we do that with digital, either with a dedicated camera or even my phone? And what about those prints? How can I get that same sensation of looking through those photos in the car? Or how can I come close to that with digital? So today I'm talking about a few of the ways that I've scratched that film itch while shooting digitally. And to do that, we're going to talk phones, hardware, and software. First, phones. Many of you who shoot with Fuji equipment know about FujiXWeekly.com and Richie who runs it. Did you know that in addition to his film recipes for Fuji cameras, he also has an app appropriately named Richie Cam. Richie's app will help you to get a number of different film looks from your phone's camera. No setup of the phone needed. It's all in the app itself. And one great feature of the app is that you can point your camera at a scene, scroll through and select the different options. And then what I like to do is lock in that particular look for the rest of my shooting, maybe the rest of the day, as though it's a roll of film that I've put in my camera, in this case, my phone. I wanna be clear that this video is not sponsored by Richie or anyone else. We know him from his site, we've collaborated with him, and Lee and I both use his app almost exclusively when taking pictures with our phones. 
As a huge convenience, the app puts your Richie Cam photos right in your normal phone image library. So it's not like they're hidden anywhere or locked into the app. It's just like you took the pictures with your normal phone app, but you used Richie Cam. Like always, Richie's thought this through. He's thought everything through. You can download the app for free with a few of the film looks, but you can also become a patron and receive even more of the film looks in the app. More on Richie in just a few minutes when we talk cameras. But first, let's talk software. There's a number of Lightroom filters and entire software packages that will help you deliver the film look to your digital images. Our favorite for a long time has been the DxO Nick collection. In this collection, there are two or three apps that stand out for film lovers. Color effects, silver effects, and analog effects. DxO is not the only game in town, and there are Lightroom filters all over the market for various film stock and analog effects. But to us, DxO is committed to this craft in ways that others haven't. And what they offer in their bundle for film lovers is hard to match because it's so comprehensive and customizable. What I'm going to do now is very briefly dig into each of the three applications that I mentioned. Color Effects Pro, Silver, Silver Effects, and Analog Effects. I intentionally chose pictures, and I talked to Lee about this, I intentionally chose pictures that were captured with the Sony a7R IV that we used to have. We felt like the colors with it were sort of digital and electronic looking. So I challenged myself here to use these analog friendly tools to see what we could do with them. Now there's a ton in Color Effect, Effects Pro. You get a ton of flexibility. You get all kinds of different looks that you can choose. I'm gonna keep it short. I'm gonna hone in on the branded film simulations that you have here. And I'm just gonna scroll down them so you can get a feel of how the image changes depending on which film stock that I choose. And I looked at these earlier and there's an irony here. My favorite for this um, portrait is actually the Fuji Instax look, which is their little like Polaroid, like instant uh, developing type uh, type film for, for their Instax cameras. And I thought that looked really cool with this imaging, gave it an analog look in contrast to the Sony look that came out of the camera originally. Uh, moving over here to silver effects, similar story. There's a ton you can do. There's a ton of things you can control. There's presets. You get a lot of the same flexibility as Lightroom. And I'm going to hone in on the film types that it offers in black and white. And I'll just scroll through here. You get different levels of contrast. Sometimes the shadows are lighter. Sometimes they're darker. And really what I like about this is we could take a, a ton of portraits like we did on this particular day. I can find a film look that works with one of them and I can apply it to the whole rest of the images, the whole bunch of those images from the shoot and really be done with the editing process, which is always my goal when I start editing is to take the images and get the best out of them without spending a lot of time. And this helps me do that. And then finally, let's go to Analog Effects Pro. Um, I, you can see here, I was really doing some wild stuff here. Let's go back just a little bit. And as you can see here, I've pulled up some classic cameras and you can go through here. So analog effects doesn't have different film types. It's kind of a whole look. Like here, this one has some dust and scratches on it and it has some heavy vignetting. You can control all those individually. But today's about what can I do quickly what can I, how can I get that analog look without spending much more time than I would have if I'd just been shooting a film camera in the first place? Um, I like some of these color cast items. They really turn these more digital looking images into something that could easily be confused with something that was taken on a camera and film setup that's literally uh, generations old. Some black and white options here as well. I'm really scratching the surface here. You do get a ton of flexibility with these tools, but I did want to show it to you as an option for turning your digital files into something that looks a lot more analog. You can spend as much or as little time in here as you want fine tuning the look. DxO does have a free trial, so you can see if this speaks to you as a way to scratch the film look itch. So far, we've talked apps and software. We did touch on hardware because a phone is hardware, but for our phones, it's really Richie's app software that makes it happen uh, for us with our phones. With the apps, the film recipes, and the post-processing options like filters or the DxO apps, in my mind, you're shifting the film process around. 
there's nothing like loading film into a camera and the mystery of what you'll see once the images are developed. But with the methods I've described so far, you're spending that extra time at other points of the photography process. And you can certainly always spend extra time considering and composing each photo you're capturing along the way. Let's shift our focus and talk about modern mirrorless cameras and DSLRs and trying to get a film look right out of the camera. For one, with virtually any brand, you can set for more natural colors, like I am here on our Nikon Z7. And you can set black and white, and some even let you simulate having filters over your lens to bring out different aspects of black and white images, like having a simulated yellow filter when shooting black and white. That's all very good, but there's a couple of options that stand out over the others. We love Fujifilm cameras. We've shot with many and we own the modern legend, the X100V. Out of the box, Fuji on the X100V and many of their other cameras, uh, they give you color science and black and white science for various Fujifilm stock. You can extend this further with, get this, the film recipes from Richie at FujiXWeekly.com. There he is again. And we know no one else who's made the commitment to emulating a film look straight out of a digital camera. There's really two aspects to it. One, Fuji gives you the flexibility to alter so many aspects of the image as it's being captured. And when you combine that with Richie's dedication to painstakingly finding the exact right settings uh, by making comparisons between his, his own film images and Fuji di digital images, you've got a very compelling option there. We've actually made a few videos about Richie's film recipes, and we did some comparison work in a video, uh, particularly with Kodak Tri-X 400, uh, to really put the icing on the cake for ourselves with this. Also for you Nikon shooters, Richie has a few recipes for Nikon Z cameras, and I did notice recently on his site that he's posted recipes from his community as well. So when it comes to setting up a camera with virtual rolls of film and getting those true film-like results straight out of the camera, it's really hard to beat the combination of Fuji film cameras and Richie's published work on his website. Now going away from cameras and websites for a second, there's LensBaby who has committed to designing lenses that bring a unique look to your digital images. We've had various Lens Baby lenses, even that very first one that they offered many, many years ago. The one that we keep coming back to, though, is the Lens Baby Velvet 28. It gives a softer analog look to your images. Specifically, if you want a softer look, shoot with a wider aperture. This one offers uh, f2.5 and a boost mode for wider apertures than that, now, but they are pretty soft. But once you're at f4 and narrower apertures, you get a certain softness to the image, but not one that I find objectionable. Because that soft softness helps bring that sweet film nostalgia. You can even call it a glow. Now, could we do this in Lightroom? We could probably come close, but the appeal is that you're getting the nostalgic goodness right at the moment of capture without more work later on. Now, one of my current favorite setup for capturing film-like images on digital. I change my mind a lot, and I've shot the film look most of the time with our X100V and Richie's film recipes. And some of you will hate me for the next, this next combo because it is expensive. Uh, a couple of years ago, we purchased a Leica SL2 interchangeable lens mirrorless L-mount camera. We shoot it with Leica lenses, Sigma lenses, and we've purchased adapters that let us shoot M-mount and F-mount lenses with it as well. More recently, we've purchased some Nikon F-mount film gear, and now we have some older manual-focused Nikon F-mount AIS lenses, vintage lenses. With the SL2 setting its color to the natural setting, and particularly with the F1.2 Nikon 50mm AIS lens, I have a certain zen, or I found a certain zen, when I shoot this combination. Now, I haven't take this, taken this combination everywhere, even to some of our favorite destinations, but I can tell you from my early use of it that there's more to explore with this combination. I attribute the crush that I have on this combo to a couple of different things. One, like his image quality in our eyes is different. The colors are muted, less spectacular than the punchy colors from our Nikons or even our L-mount Panasonic S5. However, we found with the Leica that it captures fine silky tones in sunsets, clouds, and other situations where there's a real fine line between the different shades, hues, and tones in the image. It captures those transitions like nothing else we've seen. Then you add a vintage lens with its own character, personality, and qualities, notably the f1.2 Nikon 50mm, which brings both its own sharpness and softness, particularly at wider apertures. 
This is a manual focus lens designed for analog times. And then you connect it to a camera that seems to bring its own pseudo analog personality to the table. Again, I've not shot this combination extensively, but I like where things are going. And we do have a few more vintage AIS lenses on our list, like the 35 millimeter f1.4 and the 135 f2. No doubt we'll put those on the SL2 in addition to our Nikon film bodies. I can't point to one film stock that this combo emulates, but it triggers the nostalgic analog mindfulness in my brain when I'm shooting with it. Of course, it's no coincidence that using a lens made for film cameras helped me achieve a film look. And yes, using the natural film style on the SL2 made a difference as well. But this is something you could try on any camera. If you're using a camera brand that made film cameras and lenses, you can probably try this on your newer camera, whether it's a DSLR or a mirrorless body. For Nikon, I can put this 50 millimeter on any of their DSLRs and using an adapter, I can use it on the Z mount mirrorless Nikon bodies as well. And as a side note, F mount is adaptable to nearly any of the modern mirrorless bodies out there. You don't need to stick to the same brand uh, between the body and the lens. And a lot of these older film lenses can be had used for a lot less than the new lenses out, out there, and they bring their own nostalgic vintage analog goodness. I am going to go ahead and plug KEH here. This video is not sponsored by them, but they are our camera gear reseller of choice. We purchased this 50 millimeter f1.2 from them and are stocking their site for a couple of other film era lenses that we do want. Uh, you can even find a treasure trove of Fuji film gear, new and older. I'll add our affiliate link down below, as well as a discount code for you to use on your purchase uh, down in the description of this video. Finally, prints. If there's one way to get the feel of a film print, it's to make prints from those digital images, whether it's using the analog-y techniques that I've described above, or just regular images from your phone or digital camera. And what gives me the feeling of film prints is those smaller prints, like those I would have picked up from the drugstore back in the day. So while we have our larger format Canon photo printer, I'm gonna focus on smaller prints today, like this Canon selfie that exclusively pumps out four by six prints from your phone or camera, works over Wi-Fi, you can take memory cards, you select which images you want, or you do what I do, you capture a few dozen images on a memory card and then hit print all. And then you check them out afterwards, uh, knowing that some will be so-so and others will be real keepers. Also, we've received this Lien mini photo printer. Am I saying that right? I don't know if I'm saying that right. L-I-E-N-E, Lien -E, uh, mini photo printer for review. It's, it's portable. The images, are, the images are two by three inches. You can add a Polaroid photo type, white masking around the border. They're adhesive. And the goal here is to print your images, look at them, Stick them places if you want, and just enjoy them in the real physical world, which with digital is easy to forget to do. So far, Lee's loving it uh, while she's recovering from her surgery. You'll see a video from her pretty soon where she actually gets to do some photography in the real world and prints from the field with that new printer. Make sure you're subscribed so that you see when she makes her first grand re reappearance back on her channel. I've referenced a few of our past videos and quite a few gear items. I'll add links to everything I can down in the description of the video, including that affiliate link and discount code to KEH. And now it's your turn down in those comments. Have you tried any of those items that I mentioned above? Do you have your own methods of bringing some film-like nostalgia into your images? Or whether you shoot any film or not, to you is film film and digital is digital and don't cross the streams. For me, it's like, chocolate and peanut butter. I like them both separately, but sometimes it's great to mix them together and get some entirely new flavors. Maybe I just need a snack, but maybe there is something to taking the amazing digital capabilities that modern cameras offer and mixing in a bit of analog and nostalgic goodness. Let us know down in the comments. Lee and I always love to hear your ideas and methods, but you might help someone else in the community also. Bye guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.